things about my fourth try to just begin the out of my mind video cast that is today based on the four options for solving any problem and we'll go through various coping skills and ways to get your mind to work better that can help you on the one hand on the mental health side of your life and on the other hand on the social and community side of your life. So let's just go ahead and get started. My name is Jennifer Lyles. I go by Jenny. I like to color, so I'm going to go back to coloring this. Every time I have one of these video casts, uh, you may occasionally see my face, but mostly what you'll see is my hands that I don't manicure, coloring or knitting or crocheting or drawing or writing or putting together a puzzle or doing something while I talk to you that I highly encourage you to do as well when you need a little break from the world or you need to find a way to get your brain to do something it didn't want to do. So, I promised you four ways to deal with any problem that comes in front of you. And I mean it. There are absolutely four simple ways that you can categorize every problem you have. The first thing you can do when you have a problem is uh, to solve it. That sounds complicated and easy at the same time because it is complicated and easy at the same time. Uh, sometimes you solve it by telling the cat to get out of the window while you're on the video cast and she looks at you like you're crazy because she knows perfectly well you're not going to actually enforce that. You can solve a problem by running to the store and pick up something that you needed. You can solve a problem like getting more education or learning a new skill. You can solve a new problem by talking with a friend to figure out how to do something better. You can solve a problem by sitting down with a piece of pen and a piece of paper and figuring it out. Lots of ways to solve a problem. But wait a second, that's only one way and that kind of covers what to do with a problem, right? Well, no. Because sometimes you can't solve a problem. Sometimes it's not about you. Sometimes it's bigger than you. Sometimes you don't have the energy. Sometimes you just don't have the energy right now. So solving the problem requires another step. The first one of those is to feel better about the problem. Let's say you are working a job. Hi, Scout. I told you to get out the window. I told you. Let's say you're working for a boss and your boss is a real jerk. Uh, I know mine is. I work for myself. That's how I know. And uh, your boss is constantly making you work extra hours and stealing from your pay or treating you badly, calling you names, accusing you of stealing, all kinds of fun stuff like that. Lots of bosses like that out there. But see, you got rent or a mortgage, uh, car payment, groceries to buy, kids to take care of can't afford to quit that J-O-B even though it's a lousy J-O-B. So how are you going to get through? Well, you already know you're already on plan one and you're solving the problem by job hunting, but you aren't going to quit your job while you're dealing with it, with the job hunting. So you still have a problem to solve and that problem is your boss is a jerk and you have to deal with them every day. So feeling better about it partially comes with, I'm getting out of here. That's a great feeling, right? So this is actually an example of something called a distressed tolerance issue or emotional regulation issue. Distress tolerance and emotional regulation are two slightly different techniques that help you figure out what to do when things are rough. Like when I had a boss I didn't like much once, I just avoided his office whenever I could. And if he tried to steal my ideas, I made sure in the next meeting that I thanked him for using my idea and I liked what he had done with it. I uh, made sure to write down any issues that we had 
that probably would be the basis of any lawsuits if I ever wanted to file one, which I never did, but if I had wanted to, I had that in mind. And I kind of used that emotional regulation to go, you know, I am taking care of myself. This person is some, isn't something I can control, but I like the place my life is heading, even if I don't like where it is right now, and that kind of helped a lot. The third thing you can do when you're in a miserable situation, like a sucky job, let's keep with that one because that one's a good one, is to tolerate the problem. And when I say, you know, feel better about the problem, you're more on the lines of let's change your emotions. Tolerating the problems is kind of pre-planning. Okay, I've already got all these stuff in place. So when I go into my boss's office today and he's saying that really inappropriate thing that I probably should sue for but won't because it costs too much money, it's too difficult, and the world does not make it easy, I will instead just say, okay, I am going to make sure that before I go into his office, I have a project that I can tell him I'm working on that's incredibly important so that I can slip out as soon as possible after answering whatever questions or instructions she has for me. And so I like, okay, I know that I'm going to have a time limited interaction with this jerk and I know that I'm going to be able to get back to the work that I either dislike or like and that as soon as I get home I can work further on my route out of here and that helps me tolerate stuff. Now, there's a fourth way to deal with uh, bad situations. Uh, it's not a highly recommended way, but frankly, it's a method a lot of us use, including myself sometimes, and sometimes it's all you got. And that one is, number four, stay miserable. <sighs> Jenny, 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 stay miserable is not a choice. Oh, yes, it is. Because even though it requires skills for all those other choices, staying miserable is the one that allows you to say, I don't need to use a skill right now. I don't have the energy to use a skill right now. I don't have the time to use a skill right now. Right now, I'm either going to consciously or unconsciously stay miserable. And that's valid. I'm not going to get mad at you for that. That happens sometimes. Sometimes staying miserable is the best you got. Okay, real quick, those four points came from a book called DBT, Skills Training Handouts and Worksheets, the second edition, copyright in 2015 by Marcia M. Linehan, Ph.D. and ABPP. And Marcia Linehan is the author of DBT, which is Dialectical Behavioral Therapy. And it is a therapy that I use quite a lot in my practice that is very helpful for a lot of people. Um, all of my videos that use DBT, DBT techniques directly will be labeled with that, so you'll be able to search my videos for that. I find it very useful for people, even people who don't have a mental illness, because it breaks everything down so nicely, and you can kind of go look at it and go... You know, I've tried X. It didn't work. Let me try Y. And if that doesn't work, let me try Z. So let me tell you what I'm trying to do with these videos. I am trying to help people solve their problems. Each time I tackle something, I'm going to tackle it first from a mental health perspective. So I'm going to be dealing with how are you going to manage your depression? How are you going to manage your anxiety? How are you going to manage behaviors you find yourself doing again and again and again that get in the way of the things you want to do? And then the second time I deal with that, I'm going to use that same technique or that same idea and say, okay, how do I influence the things I can't change? How do I deal with the things I can't change? How do I improve the world? How does this thing that I'm dealing with relate to larger issues in the world? And that's going to be kind of a different conversation. That's more along the lines of a political conversation. We're going to have those. 
and that's okay. Today's conversation is about taking care of you. So the first step when you think, oh, I just realized I have a problem, is can I solve this problem? Can I solve this problem right now or can I solve this problem later? Sometimes the answer is you can solve it right now. Sometimes the problem is I can solve it later. And sometimes is I don't know, and that's okay too. So you go to the next step and you decide whether or not you can feel better about the problem. So, you know, right now, I had a problem earlier this week that I was pretty furious about. I've decided to feel better about it. I've decided furious is a really big emotion for what I was dealing with. And so I've kind of worked myself down to irritated, you know. And irritated is a lot easier emotion to deal with than furious. Um, anybody who's watching this, I want to let you know, when I was 20 years old, I got kicked in the head by a horse. It kicked me in the front of my head and knocked me into a rock. So I ended up with a between a rock and a hard place, with the hard place being a horse's hoof. As a result, for the rest of my entire adult life, I have had a little issue with my temper. I have uh, sensory issues like somebody with autism. I've never been diagnosed with autism, but I have a lot of the symptoms and I can't say for sure whether those symptoms are because of my head injury or because I have autism, because I do have a family history of it. But if I have autism, my coping skills are enough to deal with it, so I haven't felt the need to go get it formally assessed. And that is also okay because we can't always get everything in our lives assessed by a professional. Sometimes we just say, you know what? I'm going to go with this as a theory. It works for me right now, and I'm going to act as if, and if that works, I'll keep going with it, and if it doesn't, then I won't. So a lot of times, you know, I'll have really big problems with uh, sensory issues. A big one is sound, and one of my big conflicts is that uh, my husband is a very talkative, lovely person who likes to chat with me a lot, and I like chatting with him. However, sometimes I'm not real polite with him when I'm done chatting because I'm done chatting. You know what I mean? So uh, I have to work on feeling better because otherwise I'm going to hurt somebody I love very much who didn't mean to hurt me. The next thing, let's talk a little bit more about tolerating. Because... Uh, we all have almost every day a situation that we have to deal with, that we have to get through. It could be a line at the grocery store. It could be a phone call to somebody that we don't want to make. It could be a job we don't go, want to go to. It could be a home we don't want to go to. Um, but when we look at our goals, and that's how we know whether this is a situation that we want to work on. If we look at our goals, and this is getting away from our goals, we want to figure out how to be able to reach our goals better. And I can't tell you what your goals are. Those are all up to you. But I can tell you that if you're not reaching them, you kind of need to decide whether you're going to solve problem solve whether you're going to deal with the fact that you're not going to reach your goals. And, you know, I'm never going to be a ballerina, so there's that. Um, and I just kind of gave that one up, oh, when I was about five. Gave up being a professional singer when I was about, oh, 1920. Still haven't given up on being a professional writer. I'll let you know in the end. The final thing, of course, is always you can stay miserable. So, on days when you just can't handle feeling better, go ahead and wallow for a bit. Don't live in wallow, but wallow for a bit. Sometimes wallowing is a good thing. That gives you the energy to, after you've had a little nice wallow, one that doesn't hurt you, one that doesn't hurt anybody else, get the energy up to change fix the problem, feel better about the problem, or tolerate the problem. In any case, I'm going to get this up 
on the website with a bunch of links for you. I uh, just want to let you know that each of these videos, half will be going towards me of any money you donate to my Patreon or my PayPal, and the other half I will be passing on to my best friend Kathy, who has a heart condition caused by a virus when she was in her 20s. She needs a new heart, and the hospital won't give her a new heart until she comes up with $20,000. Until she gets that $20,000, I will be giving her half of every dollar I make making these videos. So please go to my Patreon or my PayPal and either sign up to give me a buck or two every month, or, you know, a nice thinner saw buck would be great right about now. Thank you very much for listening. I will talk to you later.